Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer, and I wanted to talk to you about an overview with OBS Studio Build 21.0 that just come out this week. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you guys for showing a little patience. Uh, I know a lot of you have had questions uh, about uh, various videos. I really haven't been able to respond a whole lot to them because, as many of you know, uh, my father passed away on Monday. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I you know I just appreciate you guys uh, for uh, you know showing uh, patience and giving us uh, you know a little, little bit of privacy while we were handling uh, you know all the affairs there back at home. But I am back, and while we were gone, o uh, OBS project dropped uh, OBS Studio version 21.0, and uh, it's a major build, a lot of major changes uh, that happened that I think you would be very interested in especially with the direction they're going to OBS Studio uh, you know uh, OBS Studio really is gearing more toward I think bigger productions now uh, not just for gaming and uh, so I'll show you some of the things that they have done to make it easier for gamers but also make it more attractive for other broadcasting things like churches for instance which is something that I do at, uh, at my church I will show you how to do that um, show you all the features that they've added and really give it a more professional look and uh, and a more professional application. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and start off. First of all, let's look at the first thing that sticks off right off the bat is the new VU meter that they have given us in the audio mixer. Uh, as you can see, they've got three different colors, green, yellow, and red. That is pretty much a standard uh, industry standard for uh, audio applications. When using a meter like this, uh, as you can see, uh, you know my microphone is reading in the yellow right now. Now, what OBS Project recommends is that your you set your microphone set at the uh, level shows up in the yellow, uh, while your other uh, applications audio uh, signals show up in green. They've also integrated 7.1 surround. So let me show you real quick how to go in and set up 7.1. Now, if you do not have 7.1, okay, is it's going to auto mix this down to stereo, which is all it's always done. But if you do have a 7.1 audio source, it will now process all eight channels of audio, okay? And if you stream to a streaming service such as Twitch, which does support 7.1, um, you you know, your viewers can now have that, uh, that surround sound, which is really cool. Uh, I, personally, I don't have anything that can uh, do 7.1 that I send 7.1 anyway. Uh, so, uh, but for you guys that have that, it's available. And uh, like I said, it's just simply going in here and then selecting that. All right, so another thing that they have added, which is really important, I think it'll be something that the community will come up with some really neat tools, is scripts. Okay, so scripts here, got two different ways. You got uh, Lua scripts and you got Python scripts. And uh, so, and it's simple. I mean, if you know how to code in Python or in uh, Lua, then you can write some nice little scripts. Now, the great thing about uh, what they have done is they've actually, by going in and clicking on this plus symbol to add loaded scripts, they've actually given you a few that you can uh, go in and add that are pre-written. So, for instance, a countdown clock, which a lot of people use, a clock source, instant replay Lua, uh, which uh, you know is set up to uh, do instant replays of your live stream, for instance, is really neat. Uh, so a couple of these have already been pre-built in that you can play around with. I've actually added the uh, countdown Lua that you can see here. And you can uh, go in, you can set the time that you want the countdown to start at. Um, you can do a final text. You can go in and set the text source. So you go in and build a source and name it whatever. You know, you don't have to be text GDI. You can name it, for instance, I'll do it here. Let's do a text source and we'll call it countdown. 
all right and then uh you know here's your aerial font whatever and then you can go into scripts go down here and click select why is it not doing that? It's supposed to be there let's see let's remove it real quick let's add another one let's see if it'll allow us to do it this time there we go so there you go now the countdown source is there and uh and as you can see you have a nice little countdown clock that you can add to your stream uh, so i've done this on my on my streaming pc and uh you know on my start screen so i can have a timer now uh, it's really easy instead of having to do it the old way uh you know having to go through a whole bunch of craziness to get a timer they built it right in obs now which is nice so that is really nice so that's the that's a really big one because there's going to be a lot of talented people that know how to come up with some interesting tools using these scripts and i'm sure the forums will be filled with them and it'll bring a lot of interesting features to uh people's streams when they do this so definitely scripts is awesome all right so one of the nice features that they have added with obs studio is an audio function that is a is part of the compressor filter and it's called side chaining or ducking i'm used to calling it ducking so ducking a ducking device is when you're taking a source and you want another source that is you know equally as loud you want it to automatically lower it so you're ducking that audio uh so and you're attenuating it but automatically and it's really nice so what they have done is they have added this into uh the compressor filter so i'm gonna bring this up and i'll show you now down here i have let's see i've got this video playing now you're not actually going to hear this audio but you have two sources here. You can see my microphone that I'm talking right now moving up and down. And you also have this audio from this media source that is, uh, you can see the level indicator there. And it's about minus 20. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add a filter. Go to audio and video filters and hit the plus sign and add compressor. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So I've got this compressor added. Now, what I want to do is I want to add the side chaining and ducking source, and I want that to be my microphone. All right, so now, this is where your VU meter comes into play, which is really nice, is what I was talking about earlier. So I can measure the audio level at about minus 20 for this, this media source, okay? And my microphone, likewise, you can see that it's also about minus 20. All right, so I want to set a threshold that I would like for this to be lowered to. And so right now it's set to minus 18, but say I want to get this thing down to about minus 40, okay? So now if I were to start talking now, look at the VU meter. It's dropped down there at about minus 35. Uh, you can lower this down uh, to almost next to nothing so that it goes down really low when you're talking. And then when you stop talking, it should increase back to its normal level. So that's how you know that's how this audio uh ducking and side chaining works and it's really nice now attack is interesting because attack is how quickly you want full compression to happen so so if you have a low attack as in the instance here it's set to six milliseconds um it'll add that full effect that quickly if you don't want it added as quickly then you of course you increase the attack okay Likewise, for release, it's the same effect. Uh, when you want the effect to go away, if you want it to go away quickly, you have a lower release. If you want it to fade out gradually, you increase the release. Okay, and then the overall output gain is how you're going to raise that level uh, of the overall signal. Now, I recommend leaving, uh, generally just leave your output gain to zero but typically for this, I um, mean, you're already wanting to attenuate, right, a, a source. So you don't want to make it uh, add any more gain to that source. All right. So one of the nicest features in OBS Studio now is what we call multi-view. Uh, this is a new feature that's really going to take OBS Studio uh, to the next level in terms of opening it up for more professional uses, such as church uh, presentations, uh, even even you know really nice uh, broadcast situations because it gives you what 
uh, the industry looks at normally for scene switchers. So what I want to show you here now is the multi-view. Now what I've done is I've got a windowed version of this. If you want to go to do it, you got two ways you can do it. You can do a windowed or you can do full screen. I'm not going to do full screen because this is my gaming PC and I only have one display right now. So, but, but I can do it in windowed and it's the same thing. All it does is it gives you a preview just like OBS Studio gives you your preview screen, which is the screen that's selected to be the, the next screen to uh, go to your live view or what they call program view. And then it shows all of your selected sele scenes here at the bottom. And you can just select the scene by cl a single clicking on it and it'll highlight in green and show, and that's where what screen you have selected to preview. Also a nice feature that you can do is you can actually double click on a screen and that will become now the program screen. Uh, so it's really nice. Uh, you know, you can do, do that double clicking. And by, by going in and going to settings, going down to studio mode and and having this transition to scene when double click check, that's how you do that. Uh, so it's very easy to do. So multi view is really nice. And I can see this, like I said, a lot more uses. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to compete with other paid versions of software like vmix which is set up with this multi-view uh, that uh and is used for uh, really geared for churches is really what it is and so uh, it's nice to see obs studio going this direction uh to spread out beyond just gaming and in, in you know going into other uh, areas where broadcasting is now becoming widely popular all right so now i'm going to try to group a bunch of things together here just a little more a minute features that they've added that are more aesthetic than anything so uh they've added some changes to transition so let me bring this up again and so if you wanted to have a scene that wanted to have a specific transition so i said there was one that you wanted to have a stinger instead of it fading uh you could go into that scene you could right click on it and you can do the transition override and then add that stinger if you wanted so it's really easy and it'll stay there as long as you have it selected. If you want to deselect it, then you would go to none and have that check. Uh, so that's really nice. Another nice little feature that they've added is, uh, let's see, let's go down here. Go to settings. Uh, the, the dark theme is now default. Okay, so when you install OBS Studio, um, dark will be the default theme. But they've also added a new theme, and that is a Cree or a Cry uh, and you can see it's now a nice, dark, deep color. Oh, uh, and you may like it. Nice, bright blue buttons. Um, likewise, uh, notice all my buttons are this uh, one color blue. Now, if I wanted to bring up studio mode, for instance, now notice that the button's a little grayed out. And that shows you that that button is depressed and that that you know, function that that button controls is engaged. Uh, likewise, if you're recording... Um, the same thing will happen to color or streaming, same thing. So that's a nice little change that they've also done. And one of the things that they've now done too is also you can go in and change the name of your audio mixer. So you can go down to here to your source and say, you see it here, I have a gameplay audio name. So it's just a matter of going in, right clicking and hitting the rename and then going in and naming it whatever you want. And it's nice here because instead of having Mike Aux, I've actually changed this to my actual microphone which is an AT2020 plus. So that's pretty neat that you can go and do that. They did change, uh, let's see. Okay, so they've got where now, say if you have a, uh, you're in studio mode, but you have a, uh, a monitor that is in portrait instead of landscape, you're sitting vertically. Uh, you can go and change instead of having studio mode horizontal, you can have it in vertical. So go down to settings again, go down to studio mode, and enable portrait vertical layout just click a hit apply okay and now you got if you have a, mo a monitor that's vertical you now have your preview and your program uh scenes in a vertical instead of horizontal which is really nice but i think that's about it guys uh, uh there's really not a, a whole lot more aesthetic changes to it but we did hit the big ones that i think is 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 really important and that is the multi-view and the audio changes, including the uh, VU meter, the uh, compressor with uh, the ducking and side chaining. Uh, those are 
key to this um, thing. Also, if you want to really read up a lot about OBS, one of the features that they have worked on here recently is their wiki and their documentation. They can actually go to the OBS website, go to the wiki, and it has tons of tutorials and everything. And I don't know if I should be saying this because it's kind of, you know, it takes away from my business here. But anyway, they do have a wiki there and it does discuss each of the features of OBS and uh, including some troubleshooting, which will be really helpful. So go and check that out, guys. So thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. I hope this does help you out. Is uh, OBS Studio a uh, build 21 is really nice. Uh, I like the features that they've added, and it does open uh, open it up for use uh, for well beyond just gaming. Uh, you know, like I said, church broadcast, uh, podcast, even you know live TV. It could. It's got that ability. So, well, guys, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer, and we will see you out there. Make sure you like and subscribe. Y'all be good.